This build was my league starter that I used to complete my atlas and farm some currency. However, I think this ended up with a really nice balance of clear speed, damage, survivability, budget, and quality of life. I guess I'll start with what this build does well and what it struggles with. Mapping feels really nice, and I did all my own void stones and favorite map slots, except for the feared. Should be fine though as long as you don't roll any spooky mods on it, in fact most bosses are fine. You generally stay pretty safe. This doesn't include uber bosses though. If you're planning on killing ubers, this build's probably not the one you want. It's not a great experience. The damage is decent and you can take a hit or two, but you're gonna have to play really well. The most annoying thing is that you're pretty leech reliant for sustain. So in vulnerability phases where you can get hit are super scuffed. You can probably fix this by running multiple life lasts, but that's way too many buttons. Oh, also if you're planning on doing Cirrus, don't get hit by the die beam unless you have corrupted blood immunity or shock mitigation, cause those two things combined will kill you really fast. Now probably the most important factor when choosing a build, at least in my opinion, the actual gameplay. It doesn't matter how OP something is if it feels like complete garbage to play. This is a very lazy build that automates a lot of stuff, which makes it S tier for me. You mostly just run around and kill stuff with Ice Shot. Oh, I guess I should also mention, you can literally just swap Ice Shot with Lightning Arrow without changing anything else if you prefer Lightning Arrow, which has marginally better clear, but Ice Shot does more damage and has a better vol skill. We don't use Artillery Ballista, cause you can just use Vol Ice Shot for anything tanky. Now these things aren't mutually exclusive, in theory you can get a lot of extra damage out of Artillery Ballista, but having to drop 4 totems gets pretty annoying. I'm fine with just dropping the firing squad with one instant button press. You also don't have to worry about flasks, since they're automated and just always up while mapping. Your sustain is really good too with the instant leech mastery, you'll just need to press your life flask for corrupted blood every now and then. If you really don't want to press your flasks while mapping, then you could drop a life flask and run corrupted blood immunity on a triggered utility flask or a jewel implicit. Just be careful for random ground dots when backtracking in a map. Build builds are super socket starved these days, so you're gonna have to make some choices. I actually have some unconventional setups that I'd like to explain here. So in lieu of artillery ballista, I run a second mana forged arrow setup in addition to the usual frenzy one. Partially for laziness, but also because we're using Shroud of the Lightless so we can't 6 link it anyway. I have lightning arrow linked to innervate for some more damage on ice shot. Now it's essentially a 2 link lightning arrow, but with how it overlaps and all the extra projectiles we get from the tree and deadeye, it's actually noticeably helping with our clear. You might also notice that we're not using a multiple projectiles gem. It might increase your clear speed a bit, but with some potentially very tanky essences or expedition mobs. Having another more multiplier instead of less is pretty nice. The additional projectiles also don't affect your vol eye shot, so you'd essentially just be nerfing your damage. I chose to run Sniper's Mark with Mark on Hit for convenience, even though it kind of scuffs our build. First of all, automating it lowers its effectiveness, which lowers our damage. It also doubles the mana cost, which is not insignificant. So we have to run a lower level precision, and use this life mastery. And it takes up another gem slot which we're already kinda short on. You can self cast it if you want, but I'd gladly take these trade offs for some more automation. Now you might be tempted to go blink arrow considering how this is a bow build, but flame dash feels so much better. It's actually instant, so you can reliably use it to dodge stuff. Blink Arrow might be a bit better for just traversing the map, especially with some cooldown stuff you can get, but I'd rather have the instant skill. The last thing I want to talk about here is why I'm still using Molten Shell even though it got nerfed, and we're not even scaling that much armor. It's more of a feeling thing, honestly. Even though Steel Skin gives a bigger shield, I like having Molten Shell proc on a low level cast when damage taken. With Steel Skin, you'll probably want to have it on left click. That means it won't always be up when you're actually taking damage. Immortal Call might be pretty good, since we actually have endurance charges in maps, but the duration's a bit too short for my liking. If you can get another socket for increased duration, it might be worthwhile. 
Each piece of equipment was on average like 30 to 50 chaos worth of investment in the first week of the league, although a lot of it was self-crafted to some degree, so I wasn't really keeping track of all the expenses. So your mileage may vary depending on market conditions and your ability to find deals, but gearing should be pretty easy if you know what to look for. Plus, you can get away with much worse gear until you farm up enough currency for your endgame stuff. Now, I'm not going to go through every item on my character, that's what the POB is for, but I think it'll be much more useful to go over how I'm scaling things and what stats I was looking for on gear, because itemization is pretty flexible for builds like this. I ended up going with Abyss Jewel stacking, because you can get a lot of elemental damage on them, and the newly buffed Shroud of the Lightless, which is a 1c item, and Darkness Enthroned synergize pretty well with this build. With hit-based bows, you usually either go Fizz Conversion or Pure Ellie. Fizz has better scaling at the top end, but Elemental is a lot easier to build, and generally less expensive to get to a good point. We're scaling pure Elemental damage, so first you want to get a bow with a lot of flat Elemental damage on it. The easiest way is to just spam Essences. Generally you want a nice crit roll too, so ideally you'd want a Spine Bow base, because it has the highest balance of attack speed and crit chance. However, especially early on, 6-link spine bows can be pretty expensive, so I went with an ivory bow which is one step down. It has the same attack speed and crit, and since we're not scaling fizz, it's just as good and it was a lot cheaper. Now scaling damage is pretty straightforward. Just get flat damage, generic percent increases to elemental, attack speed, and crit multi anywhere you can. And since we're scaling every element, we can take advantage of trinity. By the way, even though Trinity's whole theme is based around using all three elements, you only really need to have two of your highest elemental damage ranges overlap. It's fine if the third one is lower, just make sure you don't have a single element dominating it. Being Tri Ellie, we also take advantage of Shroud of the Lightless's penetration. With 8 Abyss Jewels, we get 32% Ellie pen. These jewels are also a great source of flat damage. We're also leaning into things that scale off of projectile distance traveled. The distance where you get maximum benefit from these is 70 units. What are units? I don't know. But it's about this far away, which feels a bit out of range of Mana Forged Arrows' targeting radius. That means against bosses, you'll have to stand a little closer, at least initially, to get your buffs up. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this. Get Vengeant Cascade since they changed it to always return your projectiles this patch. It essentially doubles your damage, it costs 2 gold oils so it's probably going to be the most expensive single part of the build, but it's 100% worth it. So we're scaling armor and evasion with our auras and flasks. We don't get insane amounts, but it's enough to never really die in maps. You also want to eventually cap your spell suppression so you don't randomly die to an Ice Nova box or bearers. I'm doing it with 29% on gear and the rest on the tree. There's plenty of suppression nearby that I didn't need to spec into, so feel free to take some more if you don't have enough on your items. There's technically enough suppression on just the tree to get 100% if you include the evasion mastery, but that would require taking some pretty inefficient passives, so try to get at least 21 on gear. Other than that, it's just mostly life and res on my rares. The taming gives me 35 all res, so that's pretty helpful. Make sure you have at least 75% fire, cold, and lightning resistances, and generally I aim for positive, as in more than zero, chaos res. You can also get some res on your abyss jewels, so it shouldn't be too hard to cap them, however you should prioritize life and damage on the jewels. Oh, by the way, I was able to get a ring with unveiled endurance charge suffix, so I have three endurance charges up in maps, and one for bosses from the minimum. It's more of a nice luxury that I was able to fit in for pretty cheap. Don't break the bank or compromise your other defenses for this. You're going to need at least 122 int for Shroud of the Lightless, and about 155 strength for Determination. 155 is how much you need for a level 20 gem, but if you're able to get close and getting any more either becomes too expensive or scuffs the rest of your gear, you can run a lower level gem. The attributes can actually be kind of hard to fit in, so you might need some on your jewels. This includes your clusters. A lot of people neglect the little bits of res and attributes on them, but they're a pretty good source. 
There is also another way, which I'll discuss along with other changes you can make to the build in the next section. Next, to fit your auras, you'll need a reservation enchant for one of your 50%. Just buy an enchanted armor evasion base and throw some greed essences on it until you get suppression or something usable. For your boot enchant, you want either Elipen or Flat Lightning, but feel free to skip it since this is supposed to be a budget build and it's kind of expensive to pay a lab runner or to craft boots from scratch. I'm just using this lightning enchant because I got it from Merc Lab. For your Eldritch Implicits, feel free to use whatever usable ones you can get because things can get pretty pricey if you're unlucky, but there are a few that are pretty important. You're gonna want reduced mana cost on your helmet. If you can also get reservation efficiency, that's great. You can run a higher level precision. If not, don't worry about it. Pierce on your gloves is going to be really good, along with either Rage or Intimidate. You can stop with whichever one you get first, but I prefer Rage. On your boots, you want action speed, however, I just settled on movement speed, which is not bad. For the other one, just get something that isn't useless. Now your Darkness Enthroned, make sure you get a good roll on it, like at least 90%, otherwise it starts to get a little slot inefficient. Your flasks? With the use when full enchant and these passives, you'll have 100% automatic uptime in maps unless you have to backtrack a long distance. Just make sure you get some kind of charge sustain prefix on all of them, preferably increased duration. Chances are your build's not going to look the exact same, as a lot of the time you'll have to make adaptations to what you have available or any preferences you might have. Say you want more damage. You can drop a defensive aura for anger. Replacing determination this way eases up on some of your attribute requirements. Speaking of which, you have the option of using a lethal pride here to fulfill your strength requirements. You lose an abyss jewel, but you can get some pretty nice stuff on one of these. And since we have so many notables here, it shouldn't be too hard to get a few useful ones. The ones you're gonna want are double damage intimidate if you don't already have it on your gloves, and potentially Fizz taken as fire, which is a nice defensive option. Especially if you're not running Determination, you can mitigate physical damage with a bunch of Fizz taken as Ellie on this jewel, and your gear. And if you don't care about budget, you can get an insane jewel here with a bunch of double damage, but that's probably not worth it in this build because that jewel alone is gonna cost more than every other piece combined. Well, also, if you're not scaling armor, then you'll probably want to use the Mortal Call, which probably needs another socket for increased duration. Then you'll need to run an unset ring. This is a pretty good option anyway if you need another socket for something like Enlighten or Enhance for your Sniper's Mark or Flame Dash. By the way, feel free to drop some damage or this flask stuff if you want more life or potentially this power charge. Or maybe this Frenzy Charge if you're using a Timeless Jewel with something good on it, but I'm happy with how well-rounded this current setup is. Now I don't really have a leveling tree for you since I was doing a lot of experimentation, but generally you can just follow the same structure as the endgame tree, prioritizing percent increased damage and life. You're gonna want to get this leash here as soon as possible, this elemental mastery once most of your damage is elemental, and feel free to pick up nearby stuff like life, mana, extra damage, or attributes if you need it early and spec out later. I should also mention I was using Graceful Assault here until I could sustain a Silver Flask. Now that there is a Lucky Suppression Mastery, it's pretty worthwhile getting some suppression before you have 100% early on, maybe late campaign, early maps. Okay, so I actually leveled with Rain of Arrows until Blood Aqueducts, since it's what I knew and what I was used to, but using Ice Shot as soon as you get it is fine too, especially if you can get a Vault Ice Shot. You'll want to get the projectiles on the tree if you're using Ice Shot, by the way. Ascendancy-wise, get Gathering Winds first, because why wouldn't you want to go through the campaign faster? Then go Far Shot into Endless Munitions, and Focal Point last. Getting focal point second is not bad for the damage, but then you won't have the plus two projectiles until Uber Lab, and you're gonna want to start doing maps before then, and having projectiles at that point is really nice. For gems, probably the most important thing is a Mana Forged Arrows setup with Frenzy. For your main setup, Vault Ice Shot, Pierce until you get it on the tree, multiple projectiles until you can get some from the tree, and whatever gives you the most damage. 
it's probably going to be added cold or lightning, elemental damage with attacks, elemental focus, and potentially trinity if you can maintain resonance. You can also use inspiration if mana is an issue. For auras, use whatever you want. Anger or wrath for damage, purity of elements if you care about defense, precision if you need accuracy, maybe vitality before you can get leech. Now I'm not using artillery ballista in the endgame setup, but it's really nice for single target during the campaign and early maps. I got up to two 16s on just a 5 link ice shot and this bow cause artillery ballista in a 4 link was doing work on the bosses. Feel free to use whatever leveling uniques you have or can get. Since this was my league starter, I was just using whatever garbage I found on the floor. As soon as I could afford it though, I got a Rigwald's Crest cause it carries pretty hard through most of the campaign, only falling off during the later acts. A Hyrie's Bite, which I used until like yellow maps, mostly cause of the attributes. And a Thrill Steal, since the Onslaught is a lot more enticing with the removal of the support gem. Well, at least until you can get other sources of Onslaught, like Graceful Assault or Good Uptime on a Silver Flask. For a few Chaos now, you can get a Replica Tessalio's Sign or two and use Skitterbots. Then you probably won't need to worry about damage in the campaign at all. For Bandits, I helped Alira at first, then respect into the skill points later. Just kill all if you don't want to spend 20 regrets. As for gear, Get the highest base damage bow for your level and use an essence or an alk on it. Then craft some elemental damage once you have access to the crafting bench. You can also do the rustic sash recipe and potentially level as fizz converted to cold with hatred. Adjust your gems accordingly, I guess. If this isn't your first character and you have a couple chaos, feel free to just buy your leveling bows. You can probably just use a storm cloud for quite a while. So yeah, upgrade your weapon whenever you feel like the damage is falling off. For the rest of your gear, just life, res, and attributes if you need them. Okay, I added this as its own section cause it's actually really important and it feels like a lot of people neglect it. Upgrade your Pantheon. We're using Brine King for freeze immunity and Aberath because it's pretty much mandatory for farming red altars. Even if you're not though, random burning ground as a map mod is pretty annoying anyway, so it's nice not having to worry about that. Otherwise, feel free to use the bleed or poison one. Yeah, I think I pretty much covered everything. If you try the build, let me know how it goes. See ya.